Hi, this is Kath Gavin. Welcome to Breaking Bread, bite-sized messages to feed your inner man. Over the next several weeks and months, I plan to share with you my insights on the book of Revelation as I study it. So this bread will be hot out of the oven. Today we're going to continue in Revelation chapter 2, but this time focus on the church of Pergamos. So I'll begin reading in verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. So the saints in Pergamos held fast to Jesus and did not deny the faith despite dwelling at Satan's seat and despite the martyrdom of Antipas. The word martyr or martyrs occurs three times in the King James Bible, first in reference to Stephen, then Antipas, the plural martyrs is in Revelation 17. So let's turn there. And I'll read from verse 3. I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, having a golden cup in her hand. Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. So whose cup was full of the blood of the martyrs? Who was responsible for killing them? Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Who was she? The same harlot mentioned in Isaiah and Ezekiel, Judah, Jerusalem. I'll show you that. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter one. Verse 1, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Verse 21, how was the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. And let's turn to Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. I will judge thee as women that break wedlock and shed blood are judged. So we've looked at Revelation 17. Let's go to the next chapter, Revelation 18, which continues in a similar vein. Verse 6, reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. In Revelation, we see God avenging the blood of the martyrs. Babylon's cup is filled to her double. That ties in perfectly with Matthew 23. I read a few verses here from verse 29. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them that killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues, and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. 
O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens unto her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. The scribes and Pharisees to whom Jesus spoke had filled up the measure of their fathers. Their cup was full with the blood of the martyrs. Therefore God's vengeance, death, mourning, famine, and fire would come upon that generation. So what does Revelation 2.13 mean by Satan's seat? Well, Satan simply means adversary. Seat is from the Greek word thronos and means a throne as the emblem of authority. So put simply, the saints at Pergamos lived in a place where the adversary had authority to martyr them. And despite that, they did not deny the faith. We generally don't face violent persecution today, at least not in the Western world. However, we do experience pressure from our family, friends, workplace, even our government to go against our conscience. Will you hold fast to Jesus and not deny the faith in these moments of pressure? In my next video, we will dive into the church at Thyatira. So if you want to follow along this journey with me, click the subscribe button. I'd also love to read your insights in the comment section below. Until my next video, God bless.